But if you've been playing around being a beekeeper for a little while, you know that after the honey extraction it is a pain in the ass to try and get shit clean. I got myself a little pressure cleaner which made life a bit easier, but I think I needed some warmth. And then so I went and priced out a hot water pressure cleaner and I couldn't really come at, I don't know, whatever they have, somewhere between three and five thousand dollars and I thought, shit, that's a lot of money. So I was in the Bloomin' Hardware store the other day, in the camping section, and I found this Bloomin' Camp Heat Hot Portable Hot Watery Servicey thing, and I thought, well, rather than carting buckets of hot water in and out of my wife's kitchen, maybe we could set up our own instant hot water service to wash our shit down. And I thought I was walking past this in the shop and I thought, oh, look at that. It says hot tap, hot tap on the moves. And I thought, oh well, that's a lot cheaper than bloody three grand. I think it was 200 and something. So we'll put it together and see what happens. Oh, the oh. All we gotta do is figure out how to put it together. Look at that, it even comes with its own special little stickers. What are you supposed to put that on? It says, Warning, keep away from beekeepers. Nope, it says thank you for choosing our product. Frost damage warning. Ah, user's guide, that'd be us. We'd be the users, wouldn't we? I'm mean, assuming they've written that guide for us. Or for you not to read it. Well, hopefully it's not that thick and got, hopefully there's got a few other languages. It says, step number one, get your burly young son to do the work. Prepare for use. Well, to connect some hoses, well, that'd make logical sense, wouldn't it? And a gas connection. I'm just wondering where we're going to hang it. We're going to hang it on that wall over there. We've even got our own little shower head. Oh, that's kind of cool. Shit, <laughs> uh -oh. watch me break something. Hopefully that'll make a bit of a stronger jet there somewhere. For hose and off. Anyway, we're going to get this sorted because the bees are turning up. I don't know, probably isn't going to be good out in the wind. What do you reckon? Water output. Gas input. Water input. How bloody small is that? What do you reckon? Blue for cold and red for it hot? That'd make sense, wouldn't it? Don't push on that too hard. I'm assuming that's where the batteries go, is it? Ah, look. Don't break anything just yet. <laughs> okay, that's fucking smart, isn't it? Come on. Oh, shit. Special little safety thing. <laughs> Come on. What? Too bloody clever for their own good, these engineering people. what the trick is. As you push it down to release it you don't just yank it you rough bastard. <laughs> I was lucky I didn't actually break it before we got started that wouldn't have been no good would it? Oh here we go. Hang and handle bit. We just find the gas bottle, hook it up, and see what the hell happens. Where the bloody hell does it start? Oh no. We better find the start button. Where's the go button? Dad, there's clearly instructions on the side of the box. Oh, up here. Quick start, it says here. <laughs> the following is a basic guide only. Comprehensive information is in the booklet. Very good. Hang your tap. We've hung it up. Suitable ventilated surface. Attach all the inlet hoses. Attach the gas hose. Checking for leaks. And then turn on the gas. So we'll get to that point and then there's stage two. Let's not get too carried away. 
There's always some excitement here at the bush tent. I reckon we might just get away with this. Come here. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to lower it down, but still. Yeah. Don't put your gas thing in the dirt. Even I know that's a bad idea. And they're always fun when you get these bloody fittings and you've got to go the right way, the wrong way, because it's actually back to front to normal. Oh, come on. Be nice to me. Here we go. This is check for leaks. I don't know how good your nose is either out in the open. <laughs> anyway, cool. That's good. So, that hose on. Hopefully that's, that's not a bad length hose, actually. I'm not sure about my shower head for washing shit, but anyway. <laughs> Hey, I might not get in so much shit as normal because normally when I'm doing the cleanup for the next week I hear about you've got honey on my bloody doors, you've got wax trapped all through my kitchen. I tell you, as you know, there's a lot of begging going on when you screw shit up like that with your lovely women. They don't like shit all through the house. It's fair enough too. <laughs> At least they rode it big enough so I don't have to have them go and find the glasses, which is kind of good. So they must have known we we're going to be middle-aged men buying this. Because I guess if you were a young, youthful bloke, you wouldn't want a hot and heated, you wouldn't bother buying a bloody shower for going camping, would you? you just go camping and then come home and have a wash. The blue bit is how quick the water goes. Where's the fucking line though? Oh, there's the dot. See, look, there's a little dot. So you can say how much water you want and how hot you want it. Well, that's a bit flash. Rotate the water and the flame knobs to get the temperature you want. You can monitor the temperature on the little temperature control gauge. Or you could spray it on your hand and find out whether you burn yourself, I guess. But that's probably not acceptable. I love that. Item number three in the checklist. Check that your gas cylinder is full. Can you imagine these poor bastards at the trouble desk? You know, they're at the trouble desk at wherever this is, what this is, JLO Co or whatever, and someone rings up and goes, My bloody hot water service isn't working and I'm down here camping and they're all dirty and what the hell? And then they go through the checklist. Well, have you got any gas in your gas bottle? No. Oh. Well, that would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> Go and fill the bloody gas bottle up. They've even written it here, so obviously they've had a couple of phone calls like that. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Anyway, I digress. Let's not make too much fun of that. We might not get it to work ourselves. That's a bad start. What the hell with that? I would suggest that that's the rubber washer that we didn't install. So, so here I am whinging that it wasn't a very good seal, but it was all on me. I'm gonna pull up and go there. Oh, hell. Let's see if we can't get that to go. I reckon we want it about as hot as it wants to be by the feel of that, because I don't think it's going to be real hot. I have a sneaky suspicion this isn't the hottest water you're going to get. I think we're going to have to install a bloody on-off tap. That's a little bit crazy, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I think I've got to go and find myself a brush. It's not terribly hot, but anyway, it's dissolving the wax a bit better. It's better than carting the bucket in and out of the house for a hundred times. Just thinking maybe we have to install the tap because every time you you kind of stop using it you're gonna get drowned that we've got mist shower <laughs> you've got to have a shower i'm not sure about the jet that's a little bit dodgy 
but the mist seems to work good for cleaning. And then, just to add to the excitement, maybe we don't need a tap after all, because it's got an offsetting. How good's that? Yo, well, I reckon that's pretty good. I'll just put my little pressure cleaner on, whiz off the bottom of my pallet, and then I'll get Mr. Muscles here to help me carry the shit back in the shed. And then we'll be all covered all up and wait for the next bit of excitement. <laughs>